Welcome everybody. Uh, today we are discussing the Tin Drum by Gunter Grass, and um, so this is the book club read for uh, the month of uh, May, twenty twenty two. So let's begin. This is our eighteenth uh, book club discussion. Feels so good to know we have read eighteen books together. So we'll see a little bit about uh, Gunter Grass and then about the book, The Tin Drum, a little of the uh, historical context and uh, you know the uh, discussion of the theme and uh, other stuff in the book, and along and then we'll end it with some quotes. So Gunter Grass is a German novelist. He was born in uh, Danzig. Now it's known as I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. It's called Gdansk Pol or something in Poland. And uh, his father was a Lutheran Protestant of uh, German origin, while his mother is a Roman Catholic of uh, this uh, Kashubian Polish origin. And uh, I think that's why in the book also we have a lot of places where you know there's a lot of talk about Protestants and Catholics. So his parents had a grocery store with an attached apartment. Yes, again, it's the same, just like the protagonist, uh, Oscar. And uh, another thing about Gunther Grass was he was multi-talented. He was actually a trained uh, sculptor. He was, apart from that, he was a novelist, poet, playwright, illustrator, graphic artist, and uh, he wore uh, really many hats. And of course, he won the 1999 uh, Nobel Prize in Literature. um one of those things about gunther grass which he did not reveal for a long time was that he served as a drafted soldier from uh, the late 1944 for about i think 2 years or so in the waffen ss uh, so he was a part of he was an ss officer and he revealed this only in 2006 when he was about 79 years old so he was a drafted soldier uh, i think when he was about 17 years of age and he kept quiet about this for nearly you know uh, 60 years and then he revealed that uh, he was uh, when he was about 79 years old that he was an ss soldier and this was uh, this led to a lot of uproar and there was a um, lot of opposition for him uh, people didn't like it that uh, you know that someone who was an uh, ss officer has been uh, you know given the nobel prize in literature so uh, he was taken as a war prisoner of war by us forces at the end of the war in may 1945 and he was actually released in april 1946 later when he was explaining uh, to bbc he said that it happened as it did to many of my age we were in the labor service and all at once a year later the call up notice lay on the table so and uh, only when i got to dresden did i learn that i was it was the waffen uh, ss so but he did uh, you know volunteer himself for ss which is what so many people didn't like about it he didn't volunteer but he didn't get through for a long time and then finally uh, when he was called for he was working in the labor service over there labor camp or something and uh, he was called and when he went there he realized he is a part of the waffen ss and uh, then he was taken as a prisoner by us forces and then released so once he you know confessed to this uh, the it was i think this is an uh, american uh, you know online uh, newspaper or something so spiegel online they published three 1946 documents from the us forces which verified that yes it's true grass uh, was a waffen ss member and uh, this was there was a huge uproar for this so after 60 years this confession comes a bit too late i can't understand how someone who for decades set himself up as a moral authority or rather smug one could pull this off so uh, one reason why people were really uh, you know uh, thrown away by what his confession one of the main reasons was that because he had uh, spoken out a lot about owning up to the past so he uh, spoke a lot about germany that germany has to own up to its past and uh, we should not whitewash what happened what is truth is truth what happened happened and uh, he also spoke uh, you know he spoke bad about uh, i think it was ronald reagan or something someone who went to a, a church and a churchyard in a particular place where there were ss soldiers also buried 
and uh, so gandha gras was so against that and he spoke out about it in public and uh, so all this was why people were like okay you spoke out so much about people you know you who are even uh, you know very farly associated or anything to do with ss and you yourself were an ss officer uh in the uh, in fact uh, the place where he was born which i was finding so difficult to pronounce just some time back yeah so they gave him a honorary citizenship and the uh, they went on to in fact relinquish the citizenship once they came, once they came to know that he's a part, he was a part of ss so they said that it is unacceptable for a city where the first blood was shed where world war 2 began to have a war of an ss member as a honorary citizen and uh, the person who came to uh, gandha grass's rescue or i should say who stood by him was his best friend the american novelist john irving so grass remains a, so irving wrote this really long article i'm just right reading out a few passages from it so he says grass remains a hero to me both as a writer and as a moral compass his courage both as a writer and as a citizen of germany is exemplary a courage heightened not lessened by his most recent revelation grass enlisted at 15 he has said he volunteered mainly to get away i wonder if any of his critics truly remember themselves at 15 he had volunteered for the submarines but in the last months of the war the warfenesses were taking anyone they could get i do not judge what 17 year olds volunteer for short of premeditated rape and murder i signed up for officer training as a 19 year old so this is what john irving is talking about so it seems he signed up for officer training as a 19 year old in 1961 i might have been in vietnam as early as 1965 following my graduation from university but he uh, had a child his he had a child quite early so but my first child was born in march of that year at that time they wouldn't take you for combat if you were a father so i never served I was politically opposed to the war but I actually wanted to go I was more curious about it than sensible and I felt guilty that becoming a father when I was still a college student had gotten me dismissed not intentionally so uh, so he says John Irving tries to explain what Gandhi Grass would have probably felt when he was just 17 and all this happened to him so if it is true that the nobel committee would not have given the prize to him under those circumstances then the committee should do some soul searching of its own i thought it was an award for literature not political correctness and some people are saying that grass chose to time his revelation to sell copies of his new autobiography how naive do critics and journalists think real readers of complicated fiction are grass and i aren't running out of readers uh, he says grass and i because he was also accused of the same thing he spoke about facing child abuse uh, when he was small and uh, about which he had written in one of his novels and uh, he was criticized for coming out with that because they said that you are talking about it now only because you want to sell your book so that's why he says grass and i aren't running out of readers grass is a daring writer and he has always been a daring man was he not putting himself at risk for that 15 then at 17 and now once again at age 79 and once again the cowardly small dogs are snapping at his heels so with that uh, you know uh, john irving uh, you know stood by him and uh, i of course he was not asked to give up his uh, prize or anything and it and there there's always been two views so more uh, you know there was more i think opposition in germany than when compared to other countries about uh, grass's revelation and uh, so gandhi grass uh, he married twice and he had two other relationships also where he had children so he had a lot of children he died of a lung infection in 2015 at the age of 87 he had 18 grandchildren at his funeral and uh, john irving delivered the main eulogy at the memorial service for grass so grass's main and most important work is the tin drum it's the it's a considered to be a key text in european uh, magic realism genre it's the first book of the dancing uh, dancing trilogy i think there is two more it's called cats and mouses one more and i think one more is called dog years or something so it was adopted into this uh, adapted into an award winning 1979 film so the tin drum 
uh the movie tin drum was uh, also won academy awards and it was also considered as one of the the best movies of all time to come out of europe and uh, the boy who acted as oscar uh, in the movie was actually just a 11 year old kid and uh, because of the extremely explicit explicit scenes in the book which was also shown in the movie and which were made by the 11 year old boy to actually act in the movie and uh, he actually performed uh, you know all those atrocious things which are shown in the book and uh, because of this reason the movie was banned in many countries including the us so even us banned it because uh, you know it was really deplorable i think and those times they didn't have enough of uh, child protection laws to you know to and uh, they allowed a 11 year old kid to do all this and okay so to beat a tin drum uh, is considered as a idiom and uh, it actually means that to create some disturbance in order to bring attention to a cause uh, somebody has to mute the mic yeah so uh, so one of the questions uh, which most of the um, you know i was just going through some of the questions which i usually ask relating to the tin drum and one of those things is imagine you are a you know a bookseller and you have to place tin drum on your shelf so what would be the genre in which you would put it and i think that's such a tough question because what do we call it you can you can not call it an historical i you can't call it a comic you can't call it i don't know whether you call it tragic you can't i don't know magic realism also whether it's the right thing the closest i could come up with is a darkly comic war drama with magic realist elements so i i read this somewhere and i thought that's like one perfect way of uh, describing the whole book um so initially when the book was published there was it was there was a huge opposition for the book it was considered pornographic and then there was actually legal action taken against the book the publishers and against ganta grass however you know in uh, of in a year's time itself the whole thing had settled down and by 1965 sentiment had cemented into public acceptance and it soon became recognized as a classic of post world war 2 literature both in germany and around the world um so this is just a question which i wanted to ask you and um, so what did you think about the length of the book and did the lack of a plot you know trouble you because i i was really hoping there was some story to the thing but of course like you know there isn't really you uh, know any actual plot or story to the book the novel i think is just a series of important bizarre scenes which seem to be interposed between triviality and excessiveness so uh, do you think that ganta grass has done this purposely so let me just uh, turn off the uh, screen share and uh, you can share your views did i share the screen or not at all no we not the screen at all <laughs> i'm so sorry so then what did you all see <laughs> you were listening oh my god i'm so 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 sorry but uh, did you all well were you able to go through it or what did i do you want to see it again the slides or <laughs> yeah share it acha i'll share the slides once again and so so better, better, better better share yeah let me just quickly go through it i thought this time the what i call uh, it has been changed actually more oh my god <laughs> model of presentation i thought there are no slides this time oh somebody should uh, have told me this is so I bad <laughs> i thought not bad this i thought this is a change give me a pen <laughs> <laughs> because initially also you said oh there be inter no introduction was one point you said Okay, I'm. And so I thought, sorry. okay, this is something actually. It is also required. Absent without any slides, you go on <laughs> speaking and other things. That's it. Yeah. Okay, let me just quickly go through the slides then. Uh, let us begin from beginning, madam. Just okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So yeah, we just saw about Gangar Grass, and yes. um, it was very interesting how his father also had a you know his parents also had a grocery store with an attached apartment. His mother is a 
father is a protestant mother is a catholic so i guess lot of what he is written also comes from what is his life and what he experienced and everything so did you know about this ss uh, thing uh, today only i came across it okay today only i uh, in one of the reviews actually i came across oh, this man worked in uh, yeah so, uh, like the, i was not aware of that okay and he has suppressed it it was not told actually after the lot of time and it was also questioned how come he has kept it for himself without sharing it to the world like yeah and especially because he has spoken so much actually about uh, owning yes, up to the past exactly and yeah so that is there but archana i uh, had one thought in the, the previous slide where john irving says that it was a award for literature not political correctness and i don't correct. know which year that was written but right now uh people get cancelled for their <laughs> opinions so you know award yeah. and the uh, things are based very much on on what the which way the person is leaning correct so it was a different time and author stood up yeah. for the friends yeah yeah that's it's actually it was so nice to see john owings uh, you know um uh, this long article also yeah um you anyone had a chance to come across the movie or anything i saw the trailer then i kept it as said i'll see later then <laughs> <laughs> that is it but bad it bad you able to catch it i couldn't find it on any of the things now neither on apple tv also or anything youtube it is there only few scenes right the whole movie is there the whole movie i found it i think so oh okay maybe then yeah it's a old one so maybe it's there Oh, no, it is a full movie. I but I thought now we'll see later. I kept it aside. <laughs> okay, okay. After this discussion, complete reading the book, I thought I will keep it. Otherwise, it will yeah. spoil. <laughs> so maybe I leave it. Uh, leave with this slide. I end it. So um, you can share your views. So, um, what did you feel about? You know, I, I felt the whole thing was very bizarre. Each of the scene was. Every when I even the school the first day of his school, he breaks he yeah. breaks the glass. He breaks yeah. the glass. <laughs> hey, for me, first hundred pages I had to struggle. These four skirts and potatoes that lady in that. Oh. Like, uh, <laughs> opening was the scene, and there somebody comes and running, and then she catches and she protects him from that police. Okay. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Hey, it I'm, was. Uh, then uh, maybe it is something to do unusual things because there is that uh, gabriel's influence was there on mind this something mm. magic is going to happen magic is going to come which i'm not able to understand or feel mm. like that because on the very surface of it actually there is no clear magical attribute as you just uh, observed mm. but if you really go deep into this oscar's character actually he breaks the rules of the real world Correct. Ah, uh, from his as we just said before uh, recording, from very beginning, from his birth, itself things are unusual. Correct. It's not normal that character, and it's a very complex character. Yeah. yeah But yeah. I think uh, Shamal Ravji, because of that only, you we end up not believing anything he says because everything that he says sounds so fanciful or unbelievable. That final, yeah, it's uh, all unusual. Unusual, and uh, the narration also. I got confused when first time he says third person, and again he goes to first person in the same mm. sentence. He also changes that uh, structure. Yeah. And if that if he is not sincere to the language, mm. and when particularly he is writing these things after borrowing papers from that warden, that jail uh, uh, hospital. Mm. How can we take him as a serious and sincere? He is truthful in his writings. I had it out. Because he's yeah. already thirty years of age, he's over, and for murder, which actually he says he has not committed, but he owns up, he, he accepts the punishment, he gets incarcerated, and then starts writing a book. And the language actually goes this way, that way, and that is why I found actually he was not a reliable narrator. That is first thing I felt. Mm. He is not a reliable reliable. Yes, Because definitely. Yeah. He is confined in a mental hospital. You see, Correct. everyone who has got a balance of mind definitely he will not be put in a mental asylum. Mm. He is not balanced at all. Maybe he has got a, some power to express things and speak out his experience or things. Maybe there is incoherence, failure of memory. Several things can happen when you mm. say and done. For he he has accepted a murder that he has not committed. 
that also right. reflect the status of his mind at the time of getting into mm -hmm. this mental asylum. Correct. So, as you said, bizarre madness and other things. So maybe I was missing something because the writer, I see, looking from his point of view, he is a noble, he got noble prize. <laughs> Correct. And that is a book, it made got a lot of name in German, it got translated into English. It is a translation, yeah. as this mm -hmm. madam was saying it. A mm. translation was also not that easy, they said. I mm. have not read about it. I, I'm not sure if that's like, it's, it's also a trend, uh, you know, mm. with the Nobel Committee and everyone to uh, definitely maybe as a literary style, it's a great book, but uh, maybe ah. they also, there is the thing that uh, if you criticize Germany, uh, then probably it's easier to win a Nobel. <laughs> Achha. I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking. You know, criticize Would Germany you or you criticize USSR. It's easier to, you know. Yes, uh, Alexander Solz. That is a fact. That yeah. For instance, one who goes as an anti-establishment mm. of a country which is not in good books of uh, states, actually they get awards. Mm. Political recognition that happens. But we look at the literary value. That's yeah. what I feel always. Okay, political war tones will be there. Some mm. the writer pushes some certain philosophy and things. Mm. But all said and end, actually, the milieu, the context, the genre, as you say, the language, the expression, those things I give more important. I enjoy reading that that way. Correct. So if I prejudice myself with the political war tone, I feel actually I should be missing the literary worthiness of that particular book. Mm. Correct. Correct. Actually, put it in the bracket of True. a classic. Maybe I am at a fault, not the book or the writer or mm -hmm. that particular. That is how I take. That is how yeah. at the very initial said, okay, I have perhaps I, I accept I want to read it again mm. because I could not understand what he wanted to say. And Correct. he is a very complex character, Oscar for me. Mm. Correct, true. He is very complex from very birth itself. And he himself becomes a self-created dwarf. Mm. He falls, he holds it and falls. There are yeah. two, only two characters in the book for me. It is Oscar mm. on one side and the Trintrum on the other side. That's all. <laughs> uh, I will not go the third chapter. First, second chapter, these two people only dominate. Not yeah. one is the animate and the inanimate object. We will put it that way. That true, true. <laughs> there also Gabriel uh, Garcia Marquez and also Salman Rushdie. A lot of others who have uh, who write in magic realism also uh, look up to him a lot. So they look up to Gunther Grass and to Tindram a lot. Yes, yes. So, that is the thing. True, maybe. So uh, the other, uh, so the first discussion topic was about, uh, you know, reality. So uh, how does Grass make the narrative break away from reality in such a convincing manner? So in even when you read reviews of the book, so I, I always felt everything seemed false, what he said. But when you see the reviews, there are a lot of people who write as if, you know, yes, you know, um, maybe Kurt was his son or, you know, whatever he says, they, he, even the small thing, you know, uh, I felt he wanted to explain away his dwarfism, which is why he's saying that I decided I'm not going to grow any further. Yes. Correct. Yes. So he, he doesn't want it to be seen as something which is a shortcoming for him. He wants to show as if it's a choice for him. Mm. Right. He, he preferred it. Yeah. But when you see most people, many people who write reviews, so they write as if, oh, this is a person who decided to, you know, so it's, it's, it's not something you can decide, right? But, uh, but the way he grasps right, I think, convinces people as if it's true. And uh, if you look at the trigger, actually, that made him to decide like that. Hmm. At the time of his birth, his father says, this fellow has to go to grocer home. Correct. That he did not like. So he wanted to become a dwarf. Yeah. And then his mother says, okay, when he attains the age of three years, you should be giving him a tin drum. That also remains. So he waits for three. That means uh, something, uh, you see, that is why I say character is complex and there can be many reasons uh, for him. Yeah. That, that's what, so there's like, if you see reviews or you know talk to people whoever who have read the book most of them have these both the sides you can see some yes. say he's sane some say he's insane some insane. say he really did he really decide to stop growing was he really the father of Kurt again that's also 
i in my opinion i feel he had i i don't know from whatever i read i feel like he never had any relationship with maria yes. except she just looked at him like what anyone would look at a small child you small know child, uh, uh, and take yes. care of a small child that's what i feel i don't feel he had any relationship at all with her but he assumes that you know he's had a relationship he's uh, the father of her he uses and there's so many places that he knows he's got a childish appearance and he uses that to his advantage Very especially good. yeah yeah with the with the officers the uh, the nazi officers uh, oh. and all that he does that in a very nice way he uh, you know he tries and uses that and uh, of course yes, indirectly yes. he is responsible for the deaths of all the people who are important to him nice point you said madam you see yeah. he is a small boy in appearance correct but his intellect has aged gradually Mm. You may observe actually he has an advantage. Number one, correct. He observes people without being observed. Mm. Correct. He can observe people without being observed. His intelligence is fully developed. Otherwise, you tell me how he can read. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing correctly. Rasputin and Goethe. He reads their books. Correct. He reads Goethe and Rasputin. <laughs> and he pretends to be an idiot actually but in the internally is not that way he avoids all adult again uh, that i couldn't believe shamal rao ji what i felt was he says that he is reading gothe and rasputin because he doesn't want to seem like an idiot who's not even gone to school so he tries to show himself like no no yes. i am a very smart guy i've read gothe and rasputin this is what i felt when i read that You, you can know? be easily misled, actually, by that. Yeah. <laughs> I was misled. I took him as an intellectual, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I went and searched for this Rasputin who is here, this Gota. I was not having exposure. I found they were very highly intellectual and they were yeah. personalities. Correct. So was the writer trying deliberately to misguide the reader to presume that the protagonist is an intellect? Mm. That is one point. Yeah. So, so I think some at some point for me where I lost interest. I really liked the book. Frankly, I liked the book about some. I like I told you about fifty percent of the book. I was okay. You know, I was still liking it. Thirty for first thirty percent probably very well. I liked it. Then slowly, slowly, slowly till fifty it was okay. After that, I was like, I don't like this book because I can't believe anything he says. Everything is a lie. So, and then you can't do that for six hundred pages, right? <laughs> but uh, one point that was hard touching in this, if I permitted, I can share it. Mm-hmm. For instance, along with the tree drum, actually these Nazi people they will be holding a music orchestra or something like that. Correct. They right. Just, and they were having music, military music. Correct. This man goes and actually he starts actually beating his drum. Drum to the. He makes the uh, and he makes the people to dance. Correct. I liked it. That means. I crazy. that scene was so good. It was so good, I, and I watched. It was not touching. I liked it yeah. actually. So in the movie, the when I was searching on YouTube, I found the trailer. Like what you said, I saw the trailer, and then there was this one scene also was there in one sure. of the YouTube clips. So yeah. this one scene alone, I watched, and it was so well taken in the exactly. movie too. The same. This scene. is very a nice very. Very, very, it's very good. Maybe other writer tries to communicate to us that art has the ability to defeat war and Correct. hatred. Yeah. This I like it actually. If you ask me what is the takeaway from this book, I will plainly say this is what I learned. Art has an immense capacity, humongous True. capacity actually, to neutralize hatred and war. True. <laughs> right. Um. So yeah, like I was saying, my personal opinion was I couldn't believe anything which Oscar said. Everything, you know, whether the relationship with Maria, everything felt untrue, including even the scenes. I felt felt untrue because when he tries redoing the same thing when she visits him in the mental law uh, thing, she reacts with a lot of disgust, right? So if that was something which was fondly remembered between them, I I don't think anything of that sort happened. It was all just his own, you know. Ideas or I don't know imagination, school incident, the church incident, you know, uh, breaking the church, every, uh, you know, trying to break the church, but the church doesn't break, and all that. Even before that, the you know, 
breaking the i think the statue which they had during yes, easter or something was, yeah that was really absurd that how about yeah. coming and dying actually absurd yeah everything i don't know all this everything felt absurd everything felt like it was just his own imagination and uh, i thought everything is how he thinks it must have been or how he wants it to have been or how he wants to show that it is you know like what i said he is maybe he is completely a duffer but he wants to show no no i am very big intellect you know so i didn't tell people but i was having these books within and i was reading uh, gothe and rajput yeah, uh, this is what i felt <laughs> everything, everything uh, that he was telling the correct light on that because i was confused with this project uh, yeah <laughs> maybe this fellow is an intellectual maybe i have missed some paragraphs where actually i showed mm. but he earns lot of money at the end he becomes very rich fame and money yeah he joins that uh, music music party and he makes money actually as a jazz player or a drum player mm. that is it correct and uh, also i thought maybe the whole thing was because uh, does grass want to tell us how delusional the nazis must have been to have wanted to take over the entire world so why is uh, that what that whole delusion thing is what he's trying to show through oscar or what i'm not sure it feels like oscar was also equally completely you know delusional about things and uh, the other thing was uh, whether this whole story whether it was an allegory that was something which i was wondering and uh, this is something whatever i'm uh talking now i didn't read anywhere i it's just something which i felt uh runs similar to the story of uh you know germany so if we see if we think oscar represents nazi germany by the way i have not read this anywhere so i don't know it's just my out of my own mind and uh, out of teaching my son also about world war 2 and germany <laughs> but uh, in case you feel i'm wrong or if you feel you want to add to something please feel free to so i felt oscar represents nazi germany stunted but full of himself shortcomings are also is it's been shown like as if it's a choice it's not shown as a shortcoming he does not own up to any of its faults he wants to lord over everyone sees himself as someone different and superior yeah and uh, everyone else is inferior and also i felt in some way he doesn't feel others need to exist also uh you know very few times like he is uh, responsible for his the prism the uh, the father whom he presumes to have been his father also he is responsible for his death he is the one who ta- makes him go back to the post office right to repair the drum or something like that yeah and then again with the um, mazeret also he is the one who comes and gives that pin and uh, because of which when the russians come in and he is found out as a nazi officer again with his mother also i think just the thought that she might have another oscar itself was enough to her want to kill herself so uh, but you know uh, despite all that he he is like i am i don't need anybody i am so superior you know just what nazis felt towards jews or probably that and after the world war 2 he runs to west germany and he wants to become and that's when he decides i want to gain height again so i want to become big so this again felt so similar to west germany and east germany so he goes to west germany but he still misses east germany he miss he he thinks about east germany too his life before he wants to become big which is what west germany was at that time but it is a deformed growth because uh, you know i was just reading in my son's book and everything where uh, uh, so britain actually used to br- not have enough food for their own citizens but they used to send stuff to west germany to stock up in the supermarkets take photos and just show that okay west germany is in a much better state than the communist run uh, east germany you know just to give that picture so similarly this guy also wants to give a picture as if he is very big and he is you know he is great and he is now become bigger but he has gained very little and it's also a deformed growth he he becomes a hunchback right yes yes that yeah. is hunchback right he becomes a hunchback over there and uh, he decides no more drumming so he wants to hush up everything and act as if everything is fine but it doesn't hush up 
and also i felt grass could have let him die or something like that but i think grass purposely didn't want to do that gun to grass to oscar he because it's a very dignified thing that is a very dignified thing so i think that's why purposely he puts him into a mental institution to show how crazy the whole idea of nazism is you know <laughs> that's this is my own form of allegory for the whole thing um what do you think uh, shamal rao ji or tulika i am listening today so i haven't read the whole book i barely okay. read 20% or so okay yeah but it does seem make sense yeah <laughs> but uh, if you take him in one way he is also a rebel against nazis Mm, that is and also true mm. because in the party rally mm. he rebels against this party he drums out his own beat mm. and that completes with the fascist marching band mm. so we could take him as a rebel also yeah and that's a, also true and unreliable that's also true yes an unreliable um, narrator mm. and he is born true. with the adults capacity and perception thought and whatever etc etc mm -hmm. and he himself controls his growth he says so uh, <laughs> that is a <laughs> for and, me everything and, came back to that you know and we, and, exactly and we have not touched this aspect actually he is possessor of supernatural gifts for instance actually he is gifted with a piercing what is that a shriek that can shatter glass or be used as a weapon he says so <laughs> he has probably that angry <laughs> uh, robert the jewelry shop when he makes a hook yeah. and he goes to the paris tower top of the paris tower and again he puts in a street several things there are a lot of losers actually but still mm. what i found you cannot comfortably end the book and say ah well this is what is the book is yeah I no there is it. no one story in this it's, there's a lot and oscar itself is a very very complicated character very very difficult character i was not able to put him in any slot okay here there here there no he, if you put him there he jumps to another from there to another and all may ultimately get confused actually what this man is <laughs> correct correct i completely agree ah uh -huh. this to normally as i said in one of our that actually i identified one character that i take it as an anchor point to read the whole book this mm. in this book i could not get anybody correct <laughs> that is but uh, in fact some of the other uh, peripheral characters in fact also i think stayed a lot with me acha maria uh, maria uh, even yes, even oscar's mother also yes oscar's mother also stayed alive especially that towards the end how she dies and all was yeah, felt and very she, she, she tries to commit suicide actually yeah okay. it felt very touching it, was, it is a touching that is actually yeah very, very touching. touching yeah very touching. and yeah. the depth of this jay in his polish post office also touching scene yeah yeah hey, take you bob and this man actually reverts back uh, this uh, our uh, oscar that take yes. him and shoot him And it's so diff difficult to say whether John Ronsky was actually brave or whether he is actually a coward because initially he ran away, right? Again, because he covered. protected the post office, he was not present because uh, his uh, Oscar wanted his uh, drum to be repaired. He went to that place because that Colliera, someone is there who can repair drums in that post office, and he gets caught there. Correct. The Germans come and they take him and shoot. Correct. crazy joe is also good character yeah even that uh, uh, he, he was yes, a he grocer might... right the grocer uh, who is they show as if himself. he had a relationship with his wife he but uh, again that also i don't believe he had but that grocer also he commits suicide and he dies and all that those scenes also that touching i think uh, yeah it was quite touching it was and very... he himself cast a bits of the scaffolding to which he hangs himself and dies mm the grocer correct oh. yeah no i i think there were a lot of uh, you know good in fact i i one of the reviews i think describes it very well so she says i hated the book i hated oscar and i loved to hate both 
So I think that's how it's the best way to describe it. Um, so I I uh, I have some quotes over here, and um, so even bad books are books and therefore sacred. I think I thought that was a good one. And uh, today I know that all things are watching; that nothing goes unseen; that even wallpaper has a better memory than human being. It is in God in His heaven that sees all. a kitchen chair a coat hanger a half filled ashtray or the wooden replica of a women named neobi can perfectly well serve as an unforgetting witness to every one of our acts you are vain and wicked as a genius should be if jesus had been a hunchback they could hardly have nailed him to the cross this was also um uh, I think there was a lot of religious uh, mentions. Mentions, and yeah. he gets called uh, Jesus. Yeah, he? he gets called Jesus, but then he, <laughs> yeah, and he says he's Satan also, but he's Satan. He's, yeah. Yes, yes. When Satan's not in the mood, virtue triumphs. Hasn't even Satan a right not to be in the mood once in a while? I search on my drum for the land of the poles and drum lost not yet lost lost once more lost to whom lost too soon lost by now poland lost all is lost poland is not yet lost uh, so gantar grass was uh, is from poland uh, from the place called danzig and uh, it's so he had a lot of uh, affinity for his birthplace he had a lot of beautiful memories childhood memories of uh, poland so which is why that whole uh, trilogy is called as dantic uh, trilogy and this was the uh, tindram was the first book in it um strangely enough i received more inspiration from literature than from actual naked life an entire gullible nation believed faithfully in santa claus but santa claus was really the gas man they were referring to hitler here Yeah, and Santa Claus here means Hitler. Exactly. Yeah. That gullible nation, yes. Completely. That's what a gullible nation. Gullible and... nation, gullible. Mm. Important. Yeah. What more can I say? Born beneath light bulbs, interrupted my growth at the age of three, was given a drum, sang shattered glass. So this word, sang shattered. um inspired uh, salman rushdie so much which is Achha. how you know in this um, uh, the in his book um uh, yeah so and he has done this in his own book also so there's a lot of places where uh, he uses words like i i think i told you about this last time so he, he yeah exactly. just Very how true. like they, they talk in um, like you know in hindi nai nai if you say nai nai so like he writes the word as no no as one word and no and no 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 yeah so like you know so this is also something like that so he says yeah. that he was a lot inspired about how uh, you know uh, gantar grass used language so here sang shattered glass uh, smelled vanilla coughed in churches stuffed lucy with food watched ants as they crawled decided to grow buried the drum moved to the west lost what was east learned to carve stone and posed as a model went back to my drum and inspected concrete made money and cared for the finger gave the finger away and fled as i laughed ascended arrested convicted confined now soon to be freed and today is my birthday i'm it's 30 good years good. old <laughs> and still as afraid of the black cook as ever amen black cook who is your friend black cook i could not find that even i couldn't I, find this i i even i could follow because that finger actually that he the finger that is thing. the sister uh, sister finger no sister yeah. dorothy has finger sister singer. dorothy has somebody yeah <laughs> but uh, he has summed up the entire book in this one paragraph <laughs> exactly exactly correct exactly yeah Total so with this, yeah, total yeah. story is in this one. Yeah, yeah, total story is there in this one paragraph. Very good. Yeah. It's a very good choice. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So uh, that's that's all from me. <laughs> 
Hey, Archana, can I ask a question? Um, please, please do. I haven't, I haven't read the book. I was doing other things. And I think one of the things is I'm not very fond of World War II literature. And secondly, um, unreliable narrators okay. just throw me off. So I'm not a fiction writer. I'm, I, of course, I read. But um, I'm not able to finish books where, the, where two things. One is unreliable narrator. And then second is stream of consciousness uh, writing. Both of these... I feel it's a waste of my time <laughs> because I feel that, you know, it's like going to a classroom and the teacher is really bad and you don't like the subject because the teacher is bad, not because mm -hmm. the subject is bad or, you know, <laughs> that you will never again go back to it. But I know I can see uh, like styles and stuff, but personally mm -hmm. as a reader, mm -hmm. I feel that um, even any conversation, right, if you and I are talking and you keep blabbering, Mm -hmm. or you keep jumping uh, after a while i'm not going to i'm going to tune out right I, or i'm going to say i'm never talking to this person again because mm -hmm. i don't know where i was we're just like jumping from here so Sorry. how come how come this kind of writing wins such big prizes i mean i am just throwing out the question in general <laughs> <laughs> uh, personally but i i have read many books with unreliable narrators and i have loved this this is the first time i'm so thrown away by this uh, because one thing I think was the length, uh, 600 pages is too much for and like what you said, you tune out after some time. And I realized that after a point, after that 50-60% point, I tuned out with what he's saying. <laughs> so sometimes I was going through and then I was like, what is happening? And I had to come back. So I think I had uh, really tuned out of this whole thing. But uh, generally, there are some books with unreliable narrators which are very good, like uh, The Sense of an Ending by uh, Julian Barnes. Have you um, have you read it, Sulika? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's uh, it came as a movie too. The ending in the movie and in the book is slightly different, uh, but I loved it. I loved the book and I loved the Girl on the Train, a Gone yeah. Girl. Yes. The, the, the new age books they are really good really uh, good unreliable narrators make for very good stories very but good this stories one was, yeah this one i couldn't like this one this one i didn't like but gone girl and all literally took my breath away when the exactly. story changed the i was like, oh my it god blows you away exactly it's so I, i'm okay with unreliable narrators yes and the uh, stream of consciousness, again, I think it depends on length, Ranjini. When it's done too much, I, I don't know. Like for me, the best uh, stream of consciousness was uh, in Anna Karenina, just before she would uh, jump in front of the train, you know, right. that scene just before she oh, jumps yeah. in front of it. I think it's That's one so of good. the excellent scenes. Yeah, it's yeah. so, so good. And... Uh, I, I, I don't know how many times I've revisited uh, that uh, scene and tried to read it and go through and see how he actually did it because uh, I was working on a story where there was a scene which I had to write with which had stream of consciousness and uh, it's tough to pull it off because you need to keep the reader's interest. Uh, again, like I think with the length, it matters. If uh, entire Anna Karenina was like that, probably <laughs> it would be like a nightmare to read. So that was just that one scene. I think it was okay. This is one of the reasons I think Ranjini probably we, we didn't like syndrome. Okay. No, as a literary device, stream of consciousness versus the whole book. Like I picked up a Japanese book, uh, a book by a Japanese author and uh, it was a small book. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, you know, sometimes I'm just reading small books just to, you know, fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. And it was like, this, it's just like one sentence flows into the other. There is no, you know, demarcation of scenes changing. And it's written from a, a, a small boy's point of view, which is fine. Like, so it's just like, you know, I'm walking to school. I see this and this, 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 this. And after a while, I'm like, have days passed? Has he come back from school? Is this another day? <laughs> and, and even the 150 or 175 page book, I, I stopped reading. And I thought, yeah. oh, if I want to count it as a red book, I should finish. But I was like, no, I'm not doing it because it, it, it it's just not. Good thing I'm not on any prize committee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I I have read a couple of Murakami's uh, short stories which were like this. 
you know a kind of stream of consciousness kind of things with no plot no story nothing at all and nothing is happening also just like what you said i'm walking walking they lying in the car looking at the sky and like what's happening <laughs> i can't read this any further murakami can write anything and his his followers are still going to read <laughs> When exactly. they are in the car and looking at the sky, they will read him and say, "Wow!" Exactly. Is it that they get to a point of, um, you know, the fame is so much that right. yeah, anything that comes out uh, sounds like you know, everything is honey. <laughs> so people start looking for meanings where the author doesn't even intend because they have reached a certain stature. Mm. Like, uh, like this one. Remember Fahrenheit four fifty. I think it was Fahrenheit four fifty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says I wrote it only to show the ills of television. Correct, and, correct. But when you read the book, you can see so many things, so many issues. Yeah, probably. true, so, true. That. I I think it's a lot to do with the uh, you know with us as readers and expecting a lot out of that particular author's right. book, or maybe it's like years pass by and that's why we end up uh, seeing a lot more than what they had actually intended. Hmm. yeah so but uh, yeah i i when it comes to contemporary writing i think i need a story <laughs> probably yeah i do classic, too yeah with a classic i can i think still i'm okay with it but uh, when it comes to some someone who's my peer whose book i'm reading i i want a story without that even when it's a memoir also like ranjini your book is a memoir but it's a story right it was gripping i couldn't put it down and uh huh oh i i, I wanted <laughs> i wanted to know what's happening next what are you doing how are you handling how what's going to happen so i think uh, without a story uh, it's very difficult to read a book uh, because these are classics maybe still it's okay but otherwise it's very difficult but even a classic should have a bare minimum narrative yeah. sometimes i i i agree i agree you know i completely agree and uh, even uh, even if it's just a stringing of scenes like midnight children is just a stringing of scenes only more like tin drum kind of thing but those scenes have a meaning there is a narrative which runs through it and there's something which binds them all together though there's a lot of absurdness also there's there's a lot of story also i i, I don't know maybe because it's as indians we are reading we can relate to it more maybe it's as a german you read syndrome you might be able to relate to it more or what i'm not sure exactly but uh, with i couldn't feel that with syndrome i even 100 years of solitude felt good actually tulika you left it but it no, i left it better. because i i i was not in the right place at that point in time too many things on my mind so ah uh, right these things were happening in fact it was the opposite too much was happening too soon correct exactly so much That's was true. happening and something or the other was continuously happening you know yeah, there was like absolutely yeah, yeah i think uh, 100 years of solitude it was leaping because you had to cover 100 years right correct correct <laughs> so <laughs> really it was like, and and you could track of the names and the generations so you were not yeah. sure they had yeah. like But uh, sort of but actually, Ranjini, it wasn't difficult to keep a track of the name, though the name was repeating. If you read it continuously, yeah. you know, if you leave a break, that's when it was getting right. a, become a, becoming a problem. But if you're just reading it in one flow, it it just flows. You know, the story literally. That was, that was a good book. Yeah, so yeah it's a very good. Page less twice, like which was bigger, one uh, hundred years of solitude or this one? No, this, this one, one, I think. Number which of pages. Syndrome yeah. was much bigger. Yeah. No, syndrome is really? 300 pages. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 600 pages, and to do all this stream of consciousness and unreliable narrator and all for 600 pages was becoming too much. <laughs> so you think the the uh, uh, Nobel Committee read the whole book or just said let's just be <laughs> <laughs> done with this? Um. i i hope they read maybe or else they read a summary and knew okay this is definitely against germany so we can against nazism so that deserves a prize <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. so uh, so the next book uh, we i had put up the poll and um, i got a few votes from the uh, on through email also and right now both are on a tie the pearl and uh, to kill a mockingbird so both are in tie 
I was just wondering whether we can do uh, to kill a mockingbird now, the as the first one, and then we'll do the pearl as the next one. Yeah, that works for me. Okay with me. Yeah, so we can do that then. Great. I'll I'll make a post on that and I'll put it up. So there may be uh, like a little bit of gap uh, in between. Like for instance, I was thinking we'll have uh, to we'll do to kill a mo mockingbird in around June tenth or something. uh after that i might be going for a short uh, not a short a long vacation <laughs> and uh, i'll be back by july end so july last week we'll have the pearl discussion so it's going to be like a big gap about nearly one month 20 days or so uh is that okay we'll have pearl itself or do you want to go in for a bigger read because it's going to be a long duration or should we yeah, with pearl i think we do that We'll go for a bigger one, Tulika. Yeah, I think so. If it's a month and twenty days, right? You said a month. Yeah, and it's a month and twenty days. Yeah. And uh, Pearl Pearl was saying time. actually we have left out some books. Some yeah. Books. We would review and take a bigger book out of that. That was a madam suggestion, madam. Correct, Tulika. correct. Yeah, Tulika mentioned Instead that. So going in for a new selection, new book. Correct, there correct. There are books are already. Which we had wanted to read, yeah. Ah, but, yes, yeah, we already yeah. selected them for reading purpose, but Correct. because voting they lost out. Yeah. Yes, yes, we lost them. So I oh. think actually previously which we have left out, we may mm. choose one and then go for it. Okay. So which one? Uh, anything you have in mind, uh, Shamil? I have to recollect, madam. I have to. Can see you please send me an email or a message or something on Facebook? Also, is okay. Okay, I will have to find out, ma'am. Sure, sure. Then also, we can the pearl for another after another big read. We could go for the pearl. We'll once again go back to the pearl. We'll yeah. keep it on hold. Yeah. So now we'll do to kill a mockingbird. Then immediately yes. now we'll do that. Nice. And uh, after that we'll take up the pearl. Whenever we do another big read, and then we come back, we'll do. So in between that, uh, the vote for the next book also, I'll uh, probably put it up now because uh, later it might be a little difficult for me. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I want to get hold of the book before I leave. So that's the main thing. I want to order the book and get hold of it before I leave. I'll take it with me on vacation there. So, uh, so I'll make a po post poll for that. Tulika, whatever you have suggestions, also out of I your will. previous ones, please send me a message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you can also send me uh, Ranjini. Uh, if you have I'm happy you're doing to kill a mockingbird because it's been on my list forever i i I'm know i remember you a person uh, but i think 10th june works for me uh, because same thing i'm also away from 12th june to um, i'm okay. not back in singapore till 1st of july and then i have visitors and stuff so your timing works perfectly for me great wonderful then good good and thank you <laughs> thank you so any other longer read if you have in mind you please uh, drop a message and then uh, we'll i'll make a poll on it in this weekend and we'll decide the next one also then yeah okay okay, okay then yeah thank you uh, thank you so much thank you thanks for joining in everybody thank you thank bye. you bye bye bye